The British D-Day book has landed. Welcome to episode 2 of the British D-Day book. Today we're going to look at the new universal carriers and infantry platoons that can be found in the British D-Day book. Before we start, if you like this video and want more, please like and subscribe, but the best thing you can do is share this video. Doing this will help get new players interested and benefit our gaming community. Let's begin. First up today we have the Universal Carrier Patrol for late war British armies. This box has 9 vehicles of Universal Carriers inside with 3 different types of variations of that Universal Carrier. What's in the box? In this late war edition of the Universal Carrier we have 9 Universal Carriers in the set, 1 decal sheet and 13 unit cards. This set is all plastic, as shown in the bottom right corner, as with most late war editions of the new Flames of War sets. For anyone that's not convinced, the new Battlefront plastics are fantastic, they come with my highest recommendation to use. I'd definitely prefer the Battlefront figures over the Zafita sets, as in the Battlefront seem to be a bit larger in size, however you can still mismatch the two sets if you wish. Now moving over to the Universal Carrier Patrol card. Uh, we have a hit on rating of a 4 plus, it's careful, our motivation, uh, it's a 4 plus, counter attack 6, normal for scouts, uh, we have last stand a 5 plus, it's got a really bad last stand rating, our skill is 4 plus, and our assaults is 5 plus. Moving over to the weapons, uh, for the universal carriers we have a standard MG, hold a ratifier 3, moving 3, uh, firepower of a 6, so standard MG, uh, we have an optional pet, Anti-tank weapon, uh, has a range of 8 inches, uh, halted moving, one shot each, anti-tank 10, and a firepower of 5+, plus, slow firing. Anti-tank 10 is a pretty good uh, anti-tank for a little light universal carrier. Jumping over to the armor, we have a front armor of 1, side armor of 0, top armor of 0. Uh, heading over to our unit points, we have 3 universal carriers for a total of 2 points. Now that is a great buy for any British formation to have. Doing this gives you the scout and spearhead rule. Looking at some of the advantages of taking this universal carrier is that it's so cheap. It definitely gives you something to whip around the battle for with and it can still contest objectives. Um, some of the most annoying things for if you, as the enemy, you play against is that you actually have to dedicate uh, quite a bit of anti-tank to try and destroy it, which is a real pain in the ass. Once in a competition I faced off 15 universal carriers and was only able to kill 6. The main reason I was unsuccessful about killing these things was because I could never really dedicate uh, any serious anti-tank to them. There was always something more important they had to be shot at. So bulking up your force with these universal carriers could be a really good tactic for any British player. Moving on, we now have another variation of the universal carrier. With this one we have the Wasp Carrier Patrol, uh, it has the same ratings as the previous Universal Carrier so we won't be bothered getting into that. But the key thing is the Wasp Flame Fry has a range of 6 inches, Rad Fire 3 with moving a halted, anti ant 2 and an auto firepower. Now as we know with all normal flame throwers, the opponent has to re-roll their saves for a gun or infantry team when hit by a flame thrower. and with the automatic firepower roll, you, it'd be very easy for this wasp to dig out infantry and gun teams. And for very low cost effective points, it's quite a nifty weapon to have, very useful tool in your force. To all the British players out there, this comes with a highest recommendation. Um, it could be used as an assistant or a support weapon as they go with an infantry platoon, maybe to pin down troops or to spray an objective prior to the infantry assaulting as they go in. So I definitely recommend the Wasp as a support unit that you should chuck in your force. Now moving on to the MMG Carrier Patrol. Once again, we have all the similar stats from the previous Universal Carriers. Uh, looking at the weapons, we have a MMG Carrier, a uh, range of 24, halted ratifier of 6, moving 2, which is quite poor really. It's not better than many MGs in some regards. Um, looking at our foreign bombardment, I mean, that's kind of useful, but I very few people have ever used that as a weapon against me in Flames of War. However, if you've used this Universal Carrier or the Firing Bombardment from MMG and it's very effective, feel free to leave a comment below describing how it happened because I've never been I've never been on the receiving end of a successful bombardment from an MMG before. 
Now heading over to the rifle company, this box set is a late war British company and has 20 infantry teams inside. Looks like we have a light knee mortar, some Piet teams, the command team, at least two platoons of infantry. Heading over to the back now, we have two formation command teams, uh, two unit leader teams, 12 brain gun and rifle teams, two two inch mortars and two Piet teams. One really great thing about this rifle company is that it comes with 16 unit cards. The reason for this is it gives you different variations of this rifle company. So you can use these figures for multiple companies, such as the commandos, a motor company, a rifle company, and all the desert rat variations of those companies. Our first unit card is the commando session. We have a hit on of a 4+, plus. motivation is a 3+, plus. they're fearless, our skill rating is a 3+, plus. and they are deadly in assaults, giving them a 2+, plus assault rating. That is fantastic for any infantry commander, if you're a big fan of infantry or assaulting. That 2+, plus is going to make opponents second guess about assaulting or being assaulted by these commando sessions. Moving down to weapons, we have the Brain Gun or the Rifle MG teams. The range is 16, hold rate of fire is 2, moving is 1. Standard, we have a Piet, range of 8, anti-tank at 10, 5 power, 5 plus, and the 2 inch mortar, which is a halted 1, moving 1, and 5 powerful plus. Not a bad weapon, actually. When it comes to points, to field a commando session at its full strength, you're looking at 10 points for the full 7 stands. I reckon that's a very cost effective unit right there for 10 points, getting fearless veteran troops with a deadly in assaults, that's really effective and that's a really good points ratio, so commandos are definitely a unit you want to look out for. Moving over to the motor platoon, you have a hit on rating of a 4+, plus. Uh, we have a confident of a 4+, plus. Uh, assault counter attack on a 3+, plus. Uh, a rally on a 5+. Plus. I'm not sure why it is a 5+, plus. if you have any ideas feel free to leave a comment below. Moving over to the uh, skill, we've got a trained of a 4+, plus and again, a 3+, plus in assaults. So not as deadly as the commandos, but still deadly, a veteran in assault. Uh, looking at a skill, we have a trained of a 4+, plus, but when it comes to assaults, they are considered deadly as a 3+, plus rating, uh, which is the normal veteran for any German era assault rating. Moving down to the weapons, we have a bring gun team, uh, we have a moving rate of fire of 2, and a halt of three which is pretty good uh piet team standard at range of eight and tank 10. i think i rule this is a pretty good unit um it's definitely got mixed ratings for sure um the best thing about it i believe is still that assault and hit on a four plus the biggest disadvantage i can see is the uh, confident of four plus and the uh rally of a five plus now if these troops get pinned down and you got to make those difficult rollings um you're not really going to get there i feel so yeah mixed bag really but up to the player. Moving over now to the rifle platoon, uh, we have a hit on of a 4 plus, a uh, confident 4 plus, uh, we've got the British Bulldog, the counter attack and assaults, and again that 5 plus for um, rally. We have again the uh, skilled rating of a 4 plus and the assaults of a 3 plus, so the somewhat deadly slash veteran in assault. Uh, the difference between the motor platoon and the rifle platoon from what I can see is the weapons. Um, we have a rifle MG team here for a halted rate of fire of 2 and a moving of 1. Uh, the pit hasn't changed nor has the 2 inch mortar which are there. Now moving over to our points for this unit, we have 9 points for a standard rifle platoon. Uh, it is 1 point cheaper than the commandos, but personally for the ratings, I would definitely spend the extra 1 point to get much better ratings of the commandos than anyone else. I can definitely see people taking the commandos over a standard rifle platoon any given day, to be honest. And that's pretty much it for this week's uh, video. Remember to like and subscribe to all my other social media accounts at Desert Fox Miniatures and I will see you all in the next video. Cheers.